just briefly, what was the state of Lithu Lithuanian Jewry in the early 1800s? Set the scene a bit. Sure. Um, so, you know, much of Eastern European Jewry goes through a, a very rocky time in the second half of the 18th century. Right? This is a this is the period um, uh, that sees the the great um, disputes emerge between you know, the, the rise of Hasidus and the backlash, particularly in the Lithuanian community, against you know what they saw as sort of a new form of of traditional Judaism, a new hierarchy of values. Um, this is the period in which the the what was the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth um, uh, ceases to exist and, and now becomes part and parcel of the Russian Empire. Um, and and that sparks a whole another set of kind of questions from a political standpoint of what is the what, what is what does Russia do with its Jews that it, an entire population that it now inherited um, or didn't inherit kind of conquered. Um, so it's it's a the, the end of the nineteenth century the eighteenth century is a, is a period of I think a good degree of um, of flux a, a good degree of uncertainty for much of the 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 Jewish community in the Polish Lithuanian um, uh, was the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth um, in Lithuania in particular there there is you know less of a openness to Hasidus which by the turn of the 19th century and certainly over the course of the early 19th century is, is really going to come to dominate much of what was Poland um, and, and even you know, large swaths of, of what was Central Europe, um, but really doesn't, doesn't take, doesn't find fertile soil in the Lithuanian world quite, quite the same way. What you have in those first decades of the 19th century, so is actually a, a return to some stability, actually, because they are now under the the rule of the of the Russian czars. Um, the the Russian czars, although Catherine the Great herself, um, uh, you know, who was really responsible for the the partition of Poland, was actually quite benevolent to. She saw herself as an enlightened despot and was 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 actually quite benevolent to the Jewish community initially. Um, you know, those who succeed her. Um, particularly Alexander the First, who is the who is the czar for the first quarter of the 19th century, um, and then Nicholas the First, who takes um, uh, who takes over after him, replaces him, and is the is the czar for the next quarter of the 19th century. They both have this need to do something about the Jewish question. So they there are a whole bunch of different approaches they take towards what they call Russification to try and make the Jews, the Jewish community more Russian. Um, and none of them tend to work terribly well. But but the the flip side of that is that they are quite powerful in their in their rule and, and that creates a certain sense of stability. That things are the way they are. They're not going to be changing really quite, you know, much again. Um, and when there is political political stability, there tends to be some, you know, cultural flourishing. In, in the Jewish community. So from a political standpoint, things weren't great, but, but things were actually, I think, a little bit better in terms of the, the stability, at least, that the Jewish community faced. Um, you know, what's interesting about the first half of the 19th century, though, is that this, as I said a moment ago, Hasidus doesn't really penetrate into the Lithuanian world. I mean, it's there, they know about it and they see it, but, but the, the masses are not, you know, haven't really... Um, Adopted it, so it, this is almost it's pre-Hasidus, or it's it's not Hasidus. It's also pre the you know um, the the rise of the yeshiva movement. 1803 is the the founding of the Velazhny yeshiva, and then in 1815 there will be a similar yeshiva founded in in Velazhn, but it, it's sorry in Mir, but it's not until the middle of the 19th century that these institutions really begin to dominate the landscape and and the cultural landscape of Lithuanian Jewry. So there's it's pre the real rise of the yeshiva movement. It's also pre Haskalah. That's something that we that, that we often get wrong, and that the the movement for Jewish enlightenment in Western Europe is is very much in full force. And by the end of the 18th century, the beginning of the 19th century, that's a movement that's well underway. It does not really penetrate into Eastern Europe until the middle of the 19th century. It's the second half of the 19th century that sees a rise in 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 the the 
uh, influence of Haskalah. So you have a period of, you know, 30, 40 years in the first half of the 19th century that that isn't now that where there's political stability and there's some cultural flourishing, but there is there is no there isn't quite a yeshiva movement yet. There isn't Hasidus and there isn't Haskalah, and that really is much where my book focuses on on what what what, what was happening in this really interesting world of Lithuanian rabbinic scholarship in this in this first half of the 19th century. 